Even though I'm not a big fan of tripods, sometimes I just need to use them. And of course I wanted to have one that is really fitting to my needs and I found it quite hard to find one that works well for bird and landscape photography and basically checks all my boxes. Uh, meaning it should be quite lightweight, that if I go on hikes it's not too much of a burden on my back. On the other hand, it should also be quite steady. It was also really important for me that I could shoot from a really low angle so that the legs can be extended basically horizontally. And finally, it should still have a comfortable uh, yeah, height to work with. And maybe most importantly, I also wanted something that stays for a while. I was not so happy with my first one. Uh, in fact, I was just using it now as a secondary tripod because I'm holding my proper one in the hands. And I was swearing a bit because again, I, uh, well, I hurt my thumb a bit with setting it up. So yeah, four years ago I bought the Gitzo Systematics GT3443 LS. And yeah, I paid for it on my own. I didn't get any reduction or anything, but I thought after four years of using it might be interesting for you to hear my thoughts about this tripod, if I'm still happy with it again both for bird and for landscapes photography and I will also mention some ideas if you're leaning more towards the one side or the other. So let's start with the specs. This is a carbon fiber tripod and this was really important for me because my last one was aluminum and this just means it's so much heavier to carry around and again if you hike a lot you really feel it and also in winter when it's cold or maybe even in autumn when you're not yet wearing gloves but it's already a bit cold metal always feels cold in the hands. Uh, I didn't have the opposite problem that in summer it was overheating but maybe this could even be an issue as well. Anyway I just found the carbon fiber here somehow yeah more comfortable to hold in the hands and as I mentioned it's quite lightweight so this tripod weights around two kilograms which translates I think to 4.3 pounds which I think is quite fair given that it's extending up to 1 meter 46 which translates to 51 inches and also, as I mentioned, what was quite important for me is that I can really put the legs super flat, as you can see here, and then I can go as low as 9 centimeters or 2.3 inches. Um, and this is super flat and amazing for pictures from the ground in the situations where I need it. I need to say I still prefer using my beanbag or just putting the camera on the ground directly most of the time, but sometimes there's like a not super easy shoreline or sometimes I actually use it in this position if the water is if the shore is really falling up down like this and I need to go into the water with one leg I use it like this so this was checking the boxes so far and what I also like compared to my other tripod is that it has actually four leg segments which in theory maybe makes it a tiny bit less stable but I never had any issue with this but the nice thing is it's quite compact these are 57 centimeters uh, or 24 inches so that's just nice if you're traveling to put it in the suitcase it fits at least in my suitcase even um, well not not diagonal but uh, along the edge so that's really quite handy the locks are quite easy to operate actually I, I would say maybe a third of a twist or half a twist of the of the knobs and they are completely locked or unlocked um, they are still working quite smoothly after many years as I mentioned I have used them in the water and they have also seen some salt water um, yeah now the working height as you can see now it should be quite completely extended it's 1 meter 46 um, depending on the size that you are this might not be enough for me it's just fine here usually the tripod height is still coming above which adds a bit of extra height then you have the lens foot of the lens and the camera on top so actually it's the perfect uh, height for me if I'm like just working normally taking pictures of birds in flight and so on but I need to say for landscapes um, it is rather on the small side because sometimes again I live in the mountains so I have a bit of steeper terrain and then it means that sometimes it's just like that quite steep and then I need to um, well retract one of the legs a bit more and then I just dramatically lose height to work with sometimes again for landscapes I prefer a bit a higher perspective of course sometimes also a lower but yeah, if you're a bit taller than me, I'm like 1 meter 78 centimeters. I will put the feet below, I really don't know. 
um, then I would maybe think to buy the next bigger version, which is the uh, GT 3543 XLS instead of LS. But again, for me, this was working quite well. So let me come a bit closer to show you some of the details here. Uh, so basically you can adjust here quite easily the angle of the legs. There's three positions, completely flat, this one here and the well normal one if you want to have it a bit taller and i find that these little clips or i don't know how to call them in english they work quite well i'm quite happy with them uh, again uh, the locks here are also quite nice they're rubber they seem quite tight uh, i would still if you have used it in the water highly recommend to first of all if it was salt water give it a rinse in the shower with some uh, fresh water and afterwards just extend it completely to let it dry. I forget this from time to time and then when I use it the next time it just smells horrible. Um, one thing on the feet, I exchanged them because the feet they were coming with, they were in my opinion just really not usable outside in nature. So I have these ones here. Um, they were the standard feet I think on the series before. Um, quite nice. I just need to say I already lost one so uh, I, I lost it I think in the first year and afterwards it never happened again but I would just make to make sure from time to time just check if they're still tightened properly. On the other hand if you don't like to adjust the legs all the time and still want to have a flat surface here of course you can just loosen this knob here and basically exchange the plate here for like one that has this uh, leveling plate built in. This is just a standard plate it comes with a 3 8 uh, inch screw and what I find a bit annoying, the screw is a bit small, so it works fine, but I prefer just a bit a longer screw because it gives me a bit more confidence that if for some reason the head starts to lose a bit, I just feel I have more room. And I also think if I have the tripod like this over my shoulder, I don't know, I feel more comfortable if the screw would just extend a little bit more, but it's not a big deal. And here below, I'm not sure how well you can see it. Um, there is a small hook. Uh, in my opinion, it could be a, go a bit lower, but the problem then would be that it interferes with the minimum. Well, if you put it really flat, this would actually be the lowest point. So this is why it's quite flat, I assume. This hook is uh, quite nice if you want to attach a backpack with your photography st stuff or other heavy things. Um, and this is especially true when you're, first of all, want to make the tripod more stable for really re reducing vibrations more. And more importantly, if it's super windy, I've shot in conditions with 80, 100 kilometers an hour of wind. And no matter how sturdy the tripod is, I just don't feel so safe. And if I put my camera back, which is another 10 kilo here, uh, the whole thing is just way more stable and I trust it a bit more. I once broke a lens hood because I was not doing it, uh, taking pictures of the, of the northern lights and yeah since then i'm always doing it if there's a bit of wind so the biggest downside of this tripod is in my opinion just the price point it's really not cheap i think i paid an equivalent of 850 dollars but i just checked before and it seems like in the united states they are more expensive i'm not sure if this is because they are made in italy maybe they sell them for once europe is cheaper um, that's a lot of money on the other hand my old one was like I think 250. I was not super happy with it. It was heavier. I'm not using it anymore. And like I said, I have used this since four years now. Uh, I mean, apart from a few scratches it, and <laughs> one lost feet, it performs perfectly. And from what I hear, it's quite easy to get spare parts even after many years from Git. So uh, not personal experience, but just many stories I read. So let's say you quite literally break a leg, you can just uh, exchange it. And I have the feeling with some of the cheaper companies, I'm just not sure if this is possible after a couple of years. And in my opinion, it's even though I don't like to say this, but I think it's worth to spend a bit more on the tripod because it's not that technology is evolving super fast here. Unlike um, mirrorless cameras where you have new features every year. I mean, they get a revision every, I don't know, 10 years or something, but there is nothing really yeah, revolutionary in the new series. So I think you can use them for a while. Of course, they might also break at some point, but so far I'm super happy with it. 
So if you can afford it and you want a bit of long-term investment, I could recommend it. Um, just some thoughts if you are more going for landscape photography or maybe you want to adjust the height with the center column, which I didn't want because then it's way more annoying if you want to shoot with a low angle. But if you're, and I also feel like sometimes the center column is, well, not so stable, but there are quite good ones. So if you want that, um, there's also the Mountaineer series from Gitzo. Maybe I would even look in the two series. I mean, this is the three series. Um, I think this is a nice alternative if you have also a more lightweight combo. I need to say I use this frequently with my 600 millimeter f4. So there it needs to hold a bit of weight. And if you're a bit taller than me or you also work more in rugged areas or as I said, you want sometimes just a higher perspective, uh, then I would recommend the XLS version which I'm not sure is like 300 grams heavier or something. Not much more expensive. Of course, it's also a bit bigger when packed. But yeah, I think if you are prefer a higher shooting position, again, it's worth it in the long term. On the other hand, if you still think it's a lot of money and you are mostly taking pictures in a place that you can easily access by car, like a hide or I don't know what, then I would maybe not spend so much money on the, let's say, carbon fiber bonus and look for some good aluminum tripods. They are heavier, but if you only carry them for 100 meters, I think it's not a big deal and you can save quite some money. Also, don't forget that unfortunately the tripod is only one thing. You will need a good tripod head, one that fits your needs. Personally, I really like the Flex Shooter Pro. I made a review a while ago, you will find the video here. Finally, if you're using another tripod that you're happy with, just let me know in the comments below, I would be interested. Also, since I mentioned I might need to replace my old secondary tripod and yeah, I would be curious to try something new.